just because you notice that a criminal's handsome isn't an issue, but there is a phenomenon referred to as hybristophilia, and it's quite different. Chris Watts, Ted Bundy, and Scott Peterson are several of the latest monsters on the receiving end. If you find Chris Watts, the cowardly monster, who premeditated the murder of his pregnant wife and two little girls hot, then you suffer from a real disorder with an actual clinical name, hybristophilia. Chris Watts currently receives love letters from women all over the world. This is a man that methodically planned and calmly carried out the murders of his family, the people that loved him the most, all because he wanted a do-over, a fresh start with his mistress. And his lover kept speaking of needing and wanting her first of everything with him. His sentiment enclosed in a greeting card given to her with the inscription, I love how your booty smells. It says it all. He strangled his beautiful pregnant wife carrying a baby boy that he begged her to have, despite her health issues. And then he smothered his two adoring preschool tiny beautiful daughters and then shoved them into oil tanks and buried his wife and son in a shallow grave, then relieved himself by defecating and finally followed up by sending his lover a photo of a sunflower at the burial site, as she liked these kinds of photos. And he's getting droves of love letters. Is Ted Bundy or Scott Peterson kind of sexy to you? Do you think the Night Stalker is mysteriously alluring? Well, you have a problem, and there is help out there, and you should certainly seek that help. You're suffering from hybristophilia. What is it, you ask? It's an extreme fixation in which one is intensely attracted to people who've committed violent crimes. It can even be a sexual arousal that one feels over someone else committing an offense or a violent act. It's a type of paraphilia. It's a pattern of re reoccurring sexual arousal um, or mental imagery or behavior that involves unusual and especially socially unacceptable sexual practices. More commonly discussed types of paraphilia are things like pedophilia, zoophilia, and objectophilia. They get excited by the thought of danger being so personally connected, um, yet they remain safe because the killer is actually behind bars. Someone to fix the criminal and believe that he um, has been mistreated or misunderstood and their love will fix him. They write letters to the criminal. They fantasize about becoming the object of his attention and love, often seeking some fame themselves. It uh, has a sense of narcissism to it as well. This is not to be confused with someone that's just writing a letter to a prisoner or keeping in contact with someone that you already know. Netflix uh, paid $9 million for the movie Extremely Wicked, Shocking, Evil, and Vile, starring Zac Efron as Ted Bundy. And it's going to air sometime in the fall of 2019. It has women swooning over Efron's hotness as Bundy, and even saying that Bundy himself is hot. Efron said before that he does not want his performance to be a positive depiction of Bundy. Um, he recently told Variety, I feel a sense of responsibility to make sure that this movie is not a celebration of Ted Bundy or a glorification of him, but definitely a psychological study of who this person was. In fact, there's honesty. And right now, Netflix is currently uh, streaming the docuseries Conversation with Ted with the Killer, the Ted Bundy tapes, um, and it's been aired on other networks before. One of Ted Bundy's groupies, who was married, wrote to him. She wrote to him feverishly. She said, I want you so much I can almost taste it. What I wouldn't give to have an hour alone with you. I would show you in every way how much I love you. There's nothing I wouldn't do. Chris Watts has a whole groupie following, and his fan letters have been made public via 2,000 pages of discovery. YouTube creators have dedicated hilarious videos to the reading of these letters. Candace is probably the most talked about Watts groupie. He literally went from an introver introverted, awkward, goony nerd to the cut buff silver fox. Well, once he killed them all. Even the infamous murderous tot mom, Casey Anthony, is interested in helping Scott Peterson. Peterson murdered his gorgeous eight-month pregnant wife, Lacey, and unborn son, Connor, because he too wanted a do-over. He pretended to be celebrating the new year at the Eiffel Tower while on the phone with his mistress while actually at home at a candlelight vigil outside his home for his wife's safe return. He was asking his mistress if she could hear all the people celebrating, saying it's wild, it's awesome. Yeah, he's innocent, all right. Anthony plans on proving that, 
she announced that she's going to be visiting this summer so she can actually speak to him face to face and then she's going to prove this prove his innocence some suffering from hybristophilia are emotionally damaged abuse victims themselves and they find safety and security in prison relationships keeping themselves safe from infidelities and physical abuse and some appear to have low intellect and are emotionally immature made worse by uh, involving themselves in these relationships. Chris Watt's fan letters are very comical, but they do reflect individuals in need of help. Women who gravitate to depraved predators often have their own children, and they not only risk their own health, but they risk the well-being and safety of their children. This is all the more reason to intervene when you're encountering a person suffering from this. Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, was a rapist and a murderer who loved Satan, but he didn't brush his teeth and he had horrible hygiene in general, yet he was the object of intense desire. One of his jurors was so enamored with him that she sent Ramirez a cupcake on Valentine's Day with I love you written across the top in frosting, and then she sentenced him to death. Ramirez was so desired that he received bags and bags of love letters until his death in 2005. A 30-year-old woman wrote obsessively to him, despite the disapproval from her husband. She believed that Ramirez did deserve to die, yet she considered him her best friend. She spoke swooningly of his big hands. Most tellingly, she referred to the thrill of danger of going up to the state penitentiary and said it was like a dream come true to go face to face the world with the world's most feared man. Now, Ramirez's new wife would have been furious to hear this sort of talk. Her name was Doreen Loy. She was a former magazine editor who fell hard for Ramirez when she saw his picture broadcast on TV the night before he was captured. Oh, there's just something in his eyes, she said. Maybe it's a vulnerability. I just don't know. Throughout history, cowardly, abusive predators, killers, and monsters have had women to nurture, aid, enable, and sometimes even accompany them with the commission of abhorrent, vicious acts of cruelty. Then there are those that admire and desire them after the act. If you suspect you suffer from this disorder, please seek psychiatric help as your loved ones are at risk. Until next time, stay safe.